Alright, in this video I want to talk about some common mistakes that are involved with fractions. As of November 2019, I have been a math instructor for over 12 years. And some common mistakes I see in nearly every math class that I teach, whether it be basic math all the way up to even calculus, I see students making some common mistakes involving fractions. The first one involves adding and subtracting. Suppose we have 1 half plus 5 sevenths. This is not how you add fractions. You do not take 1 plus 5 and say 6 and 2 plus 7 and say 9. That is totally incorrect and this same concept applies to subtracting fractions. To add and subtract fractions you must find a common denominator. So if we think of 1 half and 5 sevenths, look at your two denominators, the 2 and the 7, and find any number you want that 2 will multiply into as well as 7. Now the first one that may come to mind is 14 and as a matter of fact that is the least common multiple or we can refer to this as the least common denominator. So we have changed these two denominators to a common denominator of 14. And what we're really doing here is we're taking 2 times 7, that gives us 14. Well, let's do the same thing to the top of that fraction. 1 times 7 gives us 7. And if you look at this new fraction here, 7 over 14, 7 out of 14, 7 is half of 14. And that's exactly the same fraction we had right here to begin with, 1 half. 7 over 14 is the exact same thing as 1 half. Now if we look at the next denominator, the 7, if we multiply it by 2, we get 14. So let's take 5 times 2 and we get 10. 10 over 14 is the exact same thing as 5 sevenths. But now what we have done is we have found common denominators and the way that we add or subtract fractions, once we find common denominators, let's take our two numerators here, the 7 and the 10. Since we are adding those, we will get 17 and our denominator remains the same, 17 over 14. This is the correct way to add fractions. Now if we had a subtraction symbol in between here, we would take 7 minus 10. That would actually lead to negative 3 over 14. The main thing I want to hit home here is this. You must have a common denominator to add or subtract fractions. Now before we move on to multiplying, I want to stress something else to you. Some of you may be thinking, oh, we can cross multiply to get common denominators and all that good stuff. Yes, you can, but sometimes that can be overkill. Let's take 3 fourths minus 3 eighths, for example. A common denominator could be 32. 8 times 4 is 32. But you can actually find a smaller number that 4 will multiply into and 8 will multiply into. For example, 8. 8 is a common denominator because 4 will go into 8 and 8 goes into itself. And if you look closely, the only thing we really changed is the denominator of the first fraction. We still have an 8 on the bottom of our second fraction, so there's no need to change the second fraction. Let's look at this first fraction, though. The denominator is 4. If we multiply it by 2, we will get 8. So as long as we multiply the top by 2, 3 times 2 is 6, we get 6 over 8. 6 over 8, or 6 eighths, is the same thing as 3 fourths. Now we can subtract our two numerators, 6 minus 3 gives us 3, and then we have our common denominator of 8. Therefore, 3 fourths minus 3 eighths actually gives us 3 eighths. And to hit that home further, let's take a closer look at this visually. Let's look at this fraction 3 fourths. 3 fourths, think of a circle, and let's shade in 3 out of these 4 slices. Visually, what I'm shading here is 3 fourths of this circle. Now what we want to do is we want to remove, subtract, 3 eighths. Now visually, we don't have this circle broken up into 8 equal pieces, but we can easily do that by taking this circle and putting two additional lines here, and now this circle is broken up into eighths. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 equal pieces. And remember that 3 fourths? Remember that 3 fourths here? Notice how many slices we have now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 out of 8. Hello, there's that 6 eighths. 
But now let's come in here and let's remove three of these. So removing one, two, and three. Look at what you have left. We have one, two, three out of eight once we removed it. And there's our answer, three eighths. Now take this very seriously. When you add or subtract fractions, you got to have a common denominator. Don't forget that. Now let's move on to multiplying. Multiplying fractions is the easiest thing that you can do with fractions as opposed to adding or subtracting and technically dividing. Multiplying fractions, we just take the top number times the top number and the bottom number times the bottom number, period. End of story. One half times five sevenths, take the top times the top, you get five. Take the bottom times the bottom, you get 14. One half times five sevenths is five fourteenths. And that will not simplify, so we are done with that problem. Now let's look at this one because sometimes we can simplify later on in the problem or we can simplify from the very beginning. But again, multiplying fractions, top times top, two times nine, we get 18. Bottom times bottom, three times 14, that will give us 42. Now we can simplify this fraction. There's multiple ways that you can simplify fractions. Heck, since both of these numbers are even, let's divide the top and bottom by two. Sure, we could go bigger if we wanted, but this is just fine. 18 divided by 2 is 9. 42 divided by 2 is 21. Now be careful here. We can actually come and simplify this further by dividing the top and bottom by 3. 9 divided by 3 gives you 3. 21 divided by 3 gives you 7. Now this is totally simplified. Therefore, 2 thirds times 9 fourteenths, that is 3 sevenths. But let me show you something else. This is a cool trick with multiplying fractions. 2 thirds times 9 fourteenths. We can actually simplify before we multiply. Take the 2 and the 14. If we divide these by 2, 2 divided by 2 gives you 1, and 14 divided by 2 gives you 7. I am technically canceling things out at the top and bottom. Well, look at your 3 and look at your 9. We can divide these by 3. 3 divided by 3 gives you 1. 9 divided by 3 gives you 3. So now our new fraction, if you will, is 1 over 1 times 3 over 7. Well, let's take top times top. 1 times 3 is 3. Bottom times bottom. 1 times 7 is 7. Hello, there is the same answer. This shortcut, this trick here, only works with multiplying. Now some good news with dividing. If you like multiplying, well guess what? You're going to like dividing too. Let's take 1 half. And let's divide it by 5 sevenths. Well, the trick with dividing is this. Keep your first fraction the same, change your operation to multiplication, and flip the second fraction. What does that mean? Keep the first fraction, change division to multiplication, and flip your second fraction. So that becomes 7 over 5. This is referred to as multiplying by the reciprocal. We are multiplying by the reciprocal of this fraction, and reciprocal simply means flip it. Now you may think, okay, what do we do now? Well, remember, multiplying top times top, we get 7. Bottom times bottom, we get 10. 1 times 7 is 7. 2 times 5 is 10. Therefore, 1 half divided by 5 sevenths is 7 tenths. And now some of you may be thinking, Technically, could we just cross multiply? And technically, you could here, but be careful. When you cross multiply this way, 1 times 7, that has to be your numerator. And then when you cross multiply this way, 2 times 5 is 10, that has to be your denominator. So if you're going to take the cross multiplying approach here, please be careful and make sure you put those numbers in the right spots. And there you have it, common mistakes involving fractions. Adding and subtracting, you have to have a common denominator. Multiplying is simply top times top, bottom times bottom. You don't have to worry about a common denominator. And then with dividing, you can turn this into a multiplication problem where you can simply take top times top and bottom times bottom. But just make sure you keep, change, and flip. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.